Coming up on this episode of Signs of the Times, Revelation for Changing Legislation. What should be the church's response to the passing of controversial laws? Plus, how these times of changing legislation is making a shift in the prophetic voice. You do not want to miss this episode dedicated to taking a deeper look at government, politics, and the kingdom with Prophet Eric Butler. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. The man of God is in the house. Signs of the Times Revelation for Changing Legislation starts right now. Welcome to Signs of the Times, where we're talking about what God is saying in the prophetic now. You know, the purpose of this program is to provide a prophetic and spiritual perspective of the days we're living in and what lies at. Listen, I don't know any other show that quite has it like this. Listen, you need to DVR this. Let somebody know because we're about to speak to some things that are going to be life changing and that are going to bless you. Listen, I want to give you a scripture as we go into this. This is a revelation that God gave to me in Daniel chapter 7 in verse number 25. It says, he shall speak pompous words, speaking about the spirit of Antichrist against the Most High shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and this is where we want to focus today, the, and he shall intend to change the times and the laws. Then the saints shall be given into his hands. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand the importance of this revelation. The devil, watch this, when the devil wants to change the times, he uses demonic legislation. Watch this. But when God wants to change the times, he uses revelation. And to help us further unlock this revelation, Prophet Eric Butler, who is new to the Cornerstone family. I'm telling you what, he's going to be joining us to break down how God is calling us to respond in this season. Well, I hope that you're ready because we've got a great man of God in the house. His name is Prophet Eric Butler. He's the lead pastor of Christian International Church in Lincoln Park, New Jersey. Now listen, this man of God, I'm telling you what, is a prophetic voice for this hour. He's not a stranger to some of you, but he's, a, he's new to this family. But I tell you what, you are going to be impacted by the revelation he is going to share today. Prophet Eric Butler. Pleasure to be back with you, sir. Good to see you again, Jay. Man, I tell you what, listen, people need to know a little bit about your ministry. Now, listen, I know I'm not about name dropping, but I tell everybody I know Eric Butler. <laughs> I'm here right now. People don't even realize you're part of the reason why I'm here. Yeah. It was your voice. You didn't know me. I was just a wet behind the ears kid from New York that came here looking for God. And you spoke a word over me in season that helped shift me. You know, let me ask you this question real quickly. How important is it? And what does the prophetic voice I know we're introducing you and all of that, but just share this as well. How important is the prophetic voice in shifting people in this day and in this hour? It is of the utmost importance. The prophetic voice that God speaks through to shift people is the only thing that can move people from A to B. Uh, people mm. need to hear God's voice all throughout history and time. We find that it's the voice of the Lord that directs God's people. I overheard you talking earlier about this is a time where we need direction. Yeah. It's the prophetic voice that always gives direction. Mm. And what is your assignment to Pittsburgh? I mean, you've been traveling oh. not here long before I ever got here, yeah, really. but what do you feel your assignment is to these Pittsburghers? Well, I've been coming here um, probably about 25 years ministering in the Pittsburgh area and many areas throughout the United States. But I believe that part of it was to uh, open people up, open people up even further to the prophetic, uh, direct, give direction to their gifts and callings more than anything, and give direction to the churches uh, in this region. I think I ministered probably 10 or 11 different churches in this region over the years, and it's always been to give direction to this region, and God has been doing some outstanding things. I've seen him do so many things in the last 20 years, it's amazing. So in essence, he's given you a mantle to kind of be a prophetic voice 
to speak to this city and it's been proven for over 25 years. Yes, absolutely. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you say, why am I mentioning that? Because what he's sharing has been tried, tested, and proven, and this is a reason why we can give stock. We've got too many prophets nowadays <laughs> just prophesying anything, calling themselves, walking around with titles, but haven't been ordained or appointed. I heard people say some were sent and some just went. Some, some just you went. You know, you're not a went prophet. No, you're a no, sent prophet. I'm a sent prophet. That's and we right. need more people like you That's right. uh, to speak to these moments that we're in. And, you yeah. know, he's going to be ministering here right now. That is just going to be a blessing to you. Like I said, get your DVR. Let everybody know Prophet Air Butler. He is a voice that is tried, tested, and proven. And I want him to speak even right now. I'd like to, you to answer this question. Mm. Should pastors and churches, here we go, okay. be involved in politics? Uh, yes. I believe that God has called us. When we, met, when we mentioned the message of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is the rule and reign of Christ in the earth. Mm. Now, it's very important. Uh, I have to explain it a yeah, particular yeah. way. Because what we've seen in the last several years is people not only being in politics, but politics being in them. And let wow. me explain wow. that. It's, it's not that politics is supposed to direct the church. The church should influence all the different sectors of society. Influence with the kingdom of God, the message of Jesus in the earth. Mm -hmm. But we're not supposed to be dominated by systems that men create. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. simple. And what we find is you, you talked about uh, people making names for themselves. Uh, this is what started to happen before. People started to make names for themselves off of the political arena, the election seasons and all these different things, which should, have, should not have been. We as the people, as the church, as the prophetic voices in the body of Christ are supposed to speak to government mm -hmm. and government will always bow down eventually. And that's a scriptural format you can find throughout all the scriptures. But we need people that are willing. You know, I've heard one person say, I was listening to a podcast and talk about how they were in the White House and people were all excited about being in there. And they were so starstruck that they forgot about their call. That's right. What, that. what happens when the church takes their role and begins to speak to these different voices, uh, political leaders rather? Uh, what, what will happen if we begin to do that? It'll be very similar. Let me explain this. Uh, it'd be similar to, to, similar to what happened in the days of, of Jesus. Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and beware of the leaven of, of Herod. So both of these wow. systems, it wow. was the Pharisees which represented the religious order and the, the leaven of Herod represents the political order, okay, in a governmental sense. He said, beware of both of them because both of them were the forces that were manipulating the people of Israel during that time. And he said, beware of them, which means do not allow them to dominate you. You speak to them and you keep moving. But we should be able to speak. When, when they asked Jesus, they said, Herod's going to kill you, if you remember the scripture. They said, Herod's going to kill you. He said, he said go tell that fox. He said, I do cures today, <laughs> today and tomorrow. And, to, and the third day, I'll continue to do what I'm supposed to do. He never allowed that, those systems to dominate him or to take him off the mission that the Father sent him to do, which is to give his life as a ransom for many and to establish the government of God in the earth. You know, Prophet, as you're talking, I want to minister just for a minute to people in their homes. You know, this whole show here is about speaking to the prophetic now. And I sense in my spirit that there are some of you that are watching right now, whether pastors, you are going to get favor to stand before different political leaders. But God wants you to understand that favor is not given so you can name drop. That favor is not given just so you can just step in there and say, wow, take pictures and put it on Facebook. God wants to trust you with his favor so you can be a voice yes. to speak because God wants to yes. bring a revival yes. into the world. Yes. But he needs us to speak to these political parties. Right. He needs us to be a voice. Mm -hmm. Stop looking up to them and start speaking to them them mm -hmm. in this day and in this hour. Let me ask you this question. Does the church need to rise up and take a stand against political issues that are unbiblical? Absolutely. And how do we do that? What, what would you recommend? How, how can we be a voice in this generation? Well, one, you could be a voice. You start with prayer because everything starts with that. Two, you can get involved. I think the church should get involved in political things by running for office Wow. Because you have to get in the system. Yeah. You have to get in there. A man once said years, years ago, you have to see there, to be there, to be there, to see there. You've got to mm -hmm. be there. Like Ezekiel said, I sat where they sat. 
You have to get inside, but you can't let them dominate you. You have to come with the agenda of the kingdom because the kingdom, I'll give it to you this way. When you look at the book of Daniel and we see uh, all the kingdoms that in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, it says, then there appeared a stone that was cut out of a mountain without hands. And that stone came and smashed all the idols. The kingdom of God is still the most powerful thing that will ever exist in the universe and, and in the world and creation and everything. So when you get inside, when you get inside these ranks and you begin to speak uh, as the voice of God, as an oracle of God, it's guaranteed that you'll make a difference. Let's just take people in the civil rights movement. Yeah. A classic yeah. example. Yeah. Yeah. These were preachers and people just from neighborhoods in the South. And they shook America. Wow. They shook the world. They did. They, they did. really did. Let me ask you this question. You know, as you're talking, I was thinking about, all right, this doesn't apply to everybody. What I mean by that, everybody's not going to speak to a president. Everybody's not going to speak to a senator. But how important is it for all of us to redig kingdom mm -hmm. in this season? Mm -hmm. And you know what? It may not be a senator, but could it be a supervisor on a job? Absolutely. Could it be people of authority versus just saying legislators or things like that? Could it be it's time for all of us to rise up and to be salt and light, salt and light. for those places of authority to make impact? That's right. It's salt and light. That's what he called us to be. Salt's the preservative. You can start in the school system. You can speak to mm. teachers. You can speak wow. to, and these are very critical areas that yeah. go unnoticed. The education system, number one. That is critical right now because it's shifting the change in the educational system. You can speak to superintendents. You can speak to people that are cafeteria aides yeah. all the way down to levels of any kind of authority in that arena. You can speak to people that are involved in political arena and especially in the business arena. And this is what we're called to do. Mm. But we have to have the, the boldness. The church needs boldness again and courage. And that's what's missing. Well, you know, it kind of goes back to we, we've talked before about, you know, we talk about that Acts 2 baptism. Yes. You know, we see that they are filled with the Holy Ghost with power to yes. be witnesses. But ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that a lot of people don't, they forget about is that Acts 4 baptism. We do need boldness in this day because we're speaking into the culture. That's For right. far too long, we've allowed the culture to influence us, but we need to influence the culture mm -hmm. in the season. You know, it, I, it just hit me so strong. I think... How, let me ask you, how important is it for us to redig kingdom? You know, we've, we've had so much, I'm just going to be real with you. We've had so much watered down preaching and bless me and feel good and all that. How important is it for us to redig the wells of the kingdom of God again? It is of the utmost importance. It is the main message. It always has been the message of Jesus and it always will be. He said to Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. When he realized that Peter had had revelation from Father God, the shift was in. Anytime God's make, getting ready to make a big shift, he sends his prophets, he sends his voice. In the days of David, when he wanted to make a shift in the worship from the Mosaic uh, temple worship, he brought David forth. David brought forth the tabernacle. When he wanted to do different things with Jeremiah and Ezekiel, he brought forth the voices. He, it is of the utmost importance that the message of the kingdom is preached because Jesus said, when that is preached, all the other elements, the signs and wonders, the miracles, the healings will follow the message. He said, signs follow the word. And what has not been preached like it on. should be on. on a grand scale. And we have to be honest. Come we on. have to be honest. I'm following Jesus this year, 40 years. So I've wow. seen a few wow. things. Yeah. I've seen a few things. Yeah. And I've, I've watched it a, a few things and, and seen a few things. But that message when you preach it, when you're actually preaching about it, you can feel it yeah. feels different than, yeah. than a particular teaching that's uh, on a particular topic. It's still the message because it shifts the whole thing. We're dealing with governments against governments. There's no government that's greater than the government of God. None. Mm. Amen. The government Amen. of man cannot be compared Tell with them. the government of God. It can't be. It's impossible. And every government that has tried to stand up against the government of God has fallen. Even you want to get, get a natural example when Dagon was in the temple. Yeah, right, and, you right, know, right. And, he, and they put, uh, uh, I forget the guy's name right now, but when he was in the temple, he fell over overnight. Yeah. You know, every government will bow. And the, the believers, what's not been preached is that. Yeah. Yeah. We don't really have a, a confidence in the message of the kingdom. Wow. Wow. 
We don't have a confidence in the message that Jesus, who's the king of the kingdom, gave us the authority to speak. We, we, we preach everything else and our confidence is in that. You know, it can't be. We have to do exactly what he said. Let me give you another point real yeah, quick. Go. Isaiah chapter 61, uh -huh. it talks about that. You know, uh, the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me. That scripture, mm. Jesus reiterates that again when he's getting ready to start a new order. What does he do? Luke 4, 18, he starts back again. He says they give him, they give him the scroll to read in the temple. He starts to read. Okay, he reads, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to do this and that, to preach deliverance to the captives, to open the eyes of the blind. He's there and he's talking about that. Then he sits down. And I love this because he sits down. And when he sits down, he sits down in a place yeah. of authority. Yeah. That's a, yeah. a posture. Yeah. That's a posture that they should have recognized. That's a posture of a king. Okay. He said, in this day, the scriptures are fulfilled in your hearing. Mm. So he was as a king, <laughs> as a king, actually telling them, I wrote this. Wow. The revelation wow. was wow. he wrote this yeah. by the Holy Spirit. And he could sit there and say, this is the way we're going to go. He shifted everything. That's still the message that should be preached. Because you get great results and always have gotten great results. We talk about Book of Acts. Yep. When the message of the kingdom is preached, it demonstrated. Whether it touches the political system of a Paul before an Agrippa, whether it touches an economic system where we, we talked about a little early and it's kind of funny when Jesus filled up Peter's boat with yep. fish, yep. or whether it touches any arena, any arena and any culture, that message has always shifted and dominated and become a dominant culture that supersedes everything. You know, Prophet, I think that's where, you know, the whole Second Chronicles 7, 14 comes into oh. play. You know, the salt and light mm -hmm. and how we've lost that. And it's funny how we wanna pray for the world, but I don't know about anybody else, but I've been praying, Lord, help us the church. Help us the church in this season. We need a shift back in the body of Christ. We need to take responsibility for this earth. Mm -hmm. God gave the authority to us, but mm -hmm. dare I say, <laughs> that maybe we need to take up our commitment again to the cross. Absolutely. We need to take up our commitment back to the kingdom of God. Prophet Eric Butler is sharing with us on how we need to do that. Now listen, we're gonna be back in 30 seconds and we're gonna be looking at governmental authority as the kingdom of God into a deeper, deeper realm. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more Signs of the Times. Hope happens here. With the very best in inspirational programming, start your new season with Cornerstone Television Network. When you get born again, you are no longer an alcoholic, a drug addict, a sinner. That is not who you are. You had your nature changed. Find hope for a better day and sample the best of local Christian TV on Cornerstone Television Network. Well, we are back here on Signs of the Times. I'm so excited. We're just getting started here. And I tell you what, Prophet Butler is in the house. It's good to have him with us. And we're discussing how the importance of allowing God's kingdom revelation to trump any legislation uh -huh. that comes against the body of Christ. You know, it is so important. We kind of left off Prophet Butler talking about 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Mm -hmm. If my people right. who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way. Then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. There is a healing in the land, mm -hmm. but he doesn't address the world. Mm -hmm. He doesn't address politicians. Why? He's given that to us. That's right. He told us to be a voice. And I, I, I feel we need to make a shift right now. Just in my spirit, Prophet, that a lot of times we always think of like senators and legislators and judges, but you mentioned it before, the cafeteria and custodian, the, the, right. uh, the, the council in your city, councilmen yeah. and councilwomen mm -hmm. in your city, mm -hmm. speaking to those places of influence. That's Let right. me ask you a question. What happens when the kingdom of God, when we, God can trust us to be a voice mm -hmm. like Daniel or Esther to speak to whatever offices of authority, whether from the president all the way down to a, a city councilman or a councilman, wherever they are, what happens in the world when the church does their part? Everything happens. Now, let's, let's go back a little bit. When you look at the, the word, many times God doesn't do things the way we would want him to do them. 
He doesn't start, uh, let's say, mano a mano or Daniel versus Nebuchadnezzar face to face. No, he'll start with the three Hebrew boys. Mm. He'll start on the lower level where nobody's looking at him. He'll start with the little girl that's in, Eli is, is in Elijah's house when he needs to be healed, mm. the little maiden. He'll start with uh, a Mordecai that nobody knows and wow. speaks to Esther. Wow. This is what this is what those represent. This is what the custodial people and, or, or the teachers or a janitor or people like that represent because they have influence. You probably remember an old movie called The Butler. No, mm -hmm. no pun intended, <laughs> but it was the guy. <laughs> it was the guy that was the butler in the White House. Yeah. But he had the voice of the president. And he could go in and talk to wow. him. See, we need those voices. Mm. Just like mm. we, we, we could see people getting in the back door, so to speak, or getting wow. in side doors or quietly moving into places of position and influence. That's what God wants you and I to do. Our effectiveness, because we don't come to people in government um, as a governmental official. I've personally met presidents of this nation. And you don't come to them on their level. You come to them who you are, they're who they are. But let's just say you speak to someone that's their driver or someone that's in a different rank. That's what God does. Wow. And every time, if you watch, if you look in the Bible, okay, all the way back to Moses, we can see uh, when, when the ark's going down the water into Egypt, it's a little girl that says, my brother's in that basket. Let's get this basket mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. uh, the daughter of Pharaoh. It's always the unknown heroes that are throughout the Bible wow. that God always wow. uses. Wow. And it's the everyday people. See, the everyday wow. believer on, has to believe that they have a power, they have, they have an ability to communicate and be effective to change society from the ground up. Mm. That's the message of, of what we're supposed to be doing. You know, probably as you're talking, I feel an anointing you on the word. You see that, dude, the but you can see that. Right? I can see that. No, I, I'm, I'm going to take that and use that right now. I think okay. the Holy Ghost is saying, there's a reason why the butler is right. in the house right now. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. This is the story of Joseph mm -hmm. ministering to the butler in prison. There, there it is, right there. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Be faithful where you are. That's right. You don't know who, my That's right. God That's Almighty. Right. That's right. You don't know who you're ministering That's right. to. That's right. If he wouldn't have ministered to the butler, he never, never would have had influence with the That's Pharaoh. Right. You got it. The butler is in the house. Listen, I believe right now God wants some of you to realize yeah. you may be looking, you're sitting there, why am I in Wendy's? Yeah. Why am I over here at a Come grocery on. store somewhere? You don't realize who they know that as you impact right. them, it is getting ready to open up doors for you That's that right. you will use what God has placed within you. But he wants to know, can he trust you with yep. the butler? Yep. Because if he can trust you with the butler, he will trust you with the Pharaoh. You've got to learn to blossom in the prison, baby, yeah. so God can promote <laughs> you to the palace because he's going to use you to bring <laughs> wisdom and revelation and knowledge to a people that need it. But I really felt that as yeah. you were talking, it's not a coincidence no, no. that the butler no. is in the house today. That, that's right. It was the butler <laughs> that remembered. Come on. Because he told the butler, he said, when you go present a cup before Pharaoh, remember me. Remember me. But the scripture says the butler forgot him. Wow. And then later on, it came back to his mind, I think by the Holy Spirit. And he said, there's a yeah. man when Pharaoh had his dream. See, this is what the role of the church should be, is yeah. the dream makers. Wow. The church should be those that can interpret the dreams. Anytime you deal mm. with governmental dimensions, Daniel, let's, let's just yeah, look at yeah, it yeah, three yeah, times. Yeah. Daniel or Joseph, it's in the dream realm mm. that things happen. The world wow. has their own dream. It's not the dream of God. Wow, wow. But wow. they need interpreters, okay? They need interpreters because there's elements of their dream that God wants to use, but they need people that can interpret it. That's the church. It's the church that's gifted with signs, wonders, and miracles and the giftings of God to interpret dreams. Daniel told you in Daniel's, Daniel chapter 4, it's God who does what? Changes times and seasons. seasons. He's right. given the interpretation. When Daniel needed to go to Pharaoh with an answer, I mean to Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he had to get an answer. Now, Pharaoh, remember, Nebuchadnezzar didn't want to tell Daniel what the dream was about. Yeah. 
Yeah, he that's said, right. I just, and, and neither right. one of them, Pharaoh didn't either. He said, I just want them to give me an answer. Yeah. That's yeah. even harder. Wow. Because when they used their own guys, oh they couldn't God. interpret it. On, we have the supernatural in us. Ooh. And one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I, one of the reasons why the message of the kingdom has to be preached is because it's the message of the supernatural. The wow. supernatural God, the supernatural king, the supernatural Jesus. This is why. Mm. And we block that out. Yeah. You've still got people arguing whether or not tongues are real. Yeah, right, 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 right. Bigger in fish churches. to fry. Yeah, you know, our tongues real. Yeah. Or we shouldn't speak in tongues in public. All these little crazy things yeah. when it's all God. But yeah. when you look at this, when you look at this, I'm going to give you another one. God went and used uh, the three Hebrew boys. God used the butler. God always uses mm. small, unknown people. And let me give you a big one that he used to shake up the world. This guy shook up the world. Unnoticed. Ananias in Acts chapter 9, mm. an unknown disciple. Wow. Where did he come from? Yeah. Well, he obviously was one of Peter's guys. But when Paul, the Saul the Apostle, Saul the Saul of Tarsus, was knocked off of that horse in Acts chapter 9, the Holy Spirit says, Saul, go to a street called Street. There's a man there waiting for you named Ananias. He will tell you what you're supposed to do. He's going to pray for you to get your eyesight back, and you're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm. Mm. And when Ananias prayed for him, you get the apostle of apostles that comes out of that, who later speaks before Agrippa, who speaks Come before on, Festus and Felix and all these people, and he literally changes the world. I believe this is the day and hour, Prophet, even as you're talking. We've, we've talked about this before, that the superstar is over. The, 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 the day of the superstar over. is over. It's time for the dream team. Oh, that's good. I'll you know, take you take that. a look, even I'll in the natural, that. that's good. even in the natural, that's you don't right. take a look, they have the super teams now. That's right. You know, God is raising up super teams and that's you right. are a part of it and everybody has a place right. to be influential. That's right. The spirit of the Lord that's right. is it's upon me. me. Hallelujah. And that scripture is for everybody. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's, 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 a, it's the spirit of the Lord that comes on every individual that says Hallelujah. that they serve Jesus. Your we're, young men will we're dream qualified. dreams. Yeah, your old men see visions. Your right. old men will see vision. That's right. My handmaidens is my servant. That's Everybody right. Everybody is in. Did you hear the word of the Lord, ladies That's and right. gentlemen? That's right. Everybody That's right. is a part. You are anointed. Just lay your hands on your uh, belly right now and say, <laughs> I am anointed. I am anointed. The spirit of the Lord is upon <laughs> me. Hallelujah. You're anointed to heal the sick, to raise the dead. Yes. We've got to get back to prayer, prophet. That's right. That's right. How important is it for us to get back to the power source it, it, of prayer? It is the number one thing on his agenda for mm. several reasons. Number one, for relationship. For relationship. Yeah. And I was teaching this the other day when we were in, in a particular place that, that the thing that God does, he brings prayer to bring relationship. And relationship will bring, prayer will bring, relationship will bring revelation and relationship yeah. will bring uh, a release. Wow. Three R's. Wow. Wow. Let me say it again. Yeah. One, it'll bring relationship. relationship. We need to be back with the Father. Amen. The reason why we have, uh, we've allowed people to be, to supersede Jesus' greatness. Let me make this clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people say, well, if I just meet this person, if I just meet that star, if I Come just on. meet this one, on. oh, I've met them. <laughs> I remember meeting the president and, and the, the thought that I had, as soon as we sh shook hands and, and parted, I turned around and said, that's it? Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And I said, just a man. And just I walked away. But the reason why that has happened is because we've allowed them to wow. be ascending wow. above Jesus. Wow. Now, when you get back to meeting Jesus, you go up, the way up. And I've heard a preacher say the way up is, is down. Yeah. On your knees is, is how you get the heart of God. Mm. And when you get into prayer, prayer brings you into intimacy. Intimacy brings you into the secret place. The secret place brings you into the voice of the Lord, the whisperings of God. When he begins to speak to your heart, your mind, your soul, gives, gives you pictures, dreams, imagery. And then mm. it brings a revelation. Your mind begins to open wow. up and you begin to see a bigger picture where you interpret dreams. You begin to understand things. And then when that happens, you're released to do what he, what he called you to do. Mm. That's why prayer is so important. And the fourth dimension is power. Come on. Because there's no power without prayer. No power. We know that historically every revivalist, every revival, every move of God was all birthed out of prayer. Every single one of them. 
Mm. Every single one of them. It wasn't just birthed out of revelation. It was maybe a revelation, right. but it was, it was connected with deep prayer. That's why God is calling people to fasting and prayer. That's why God's calling people to prayer movements. That's why God is bearing down. He's moving fast now. I, yeah, I, I'll is. tell you this. You want a, a today word? The acceleration of the Lord's work is coming strong. Wow. He's coming strong and it's faster because he says, let's go. We've been uh, moving too slow. We, 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 we're out of this pandemic. We got to get out of this pandemic mindset. We got to hurry up mm -hmm. because I want to do something big in the earth. Mm -hmm. And he's preparing people, dream teams, yeah. dream regions, you yeah. know, and they're going to see that through their prayers, they're going to come closer to God. See this, let me just explain it to you. There were some movements that when people would pray, they'd love intimacy, but they stayed there. They stayed in just intimacy. Come on, prophecy. In, in to on. me, see, we, everybody knows that, 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 that anachronism, yeah. but into me, see. And it was about me and the Lord, and I love the Lord. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love God. And they could lay on the carpet forever, and they could, you know, soak, and they could do yeah, all the yeah. wonderful things. We've seen yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, but they stayed there. Uh-huh. Other, other groups had revelation. Mm. But we need the release now, the wow. release to go. Wow. Let me break it down again. Yeah, Acts yeah. chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Yes, sir. Jesus said, uh, Italian in Jerusalem till you be endued with, with power from on high. So they were there uh, 10 days, of course, in the uh, upper room until the day of Pentecost came. And they were there with intimacy. A lot of things had to be taken off of people. A lot of things had to be shaved off of people. A lot of things had to be moved out of the way. But on that, on that final day, it says, and when the day of Pentecost fully came, a revelation came. What was the revelation? The Holy Spirit. Holy he was the revealed, the revelation of mm -hmm. the of the Godhead came to the earth once and for all. I mean, this is that's so amazing that it's unbelievable Wow! that this is the first time the Holy Spirit came, not on a person, but to everybody. Mm -hmm. And so he opens this thing up. And then what happens after the Holy Spirit? He says all, they were speaking in tongues. They were. Uh, Fire was on their heads. They were speaking in tongues. They started speaking in other people's languages. The nations had gathered. God had set the stage yeah, for yeah, a worldwide yeah, move. Yeah. That day, 3,000 people get saved. One can chase 1,000, two can put 10,000 in flight. God had the numbers right, everything. And what's the final point? They go. They go. It's the release. Yeah. And they start <laughs> preaching. And they start, and, and when they started preaching, when you get to Acts 4, Acts 4, you talked about that before. They start preaching. And what happens? They start to get persecuted. Oh, come on now. After yeah. Acts 3, when yeah. the man and the, the crippled man at the gate, beautiful, got healed, persecution came because they were released and they said, silver and gold have, have, have we none, but such as we have give to you. They had power. It's right in front of you. You read the book of Acts, man, and it's right there. It's yeah. all right there, the blueprint of what we're supposed to be doing. The fact. Oh, come on. Somebody. No, 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 no. Let it marinate. Stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that there is no persecution is sign there is no power. And they go and, together. And they go together, which means how can we ask God for an Acts 4 boldness if we haven't gotten the Acts 2 thing right yet? And it was amazing. Now, we yeah, talked we about the butler. Uh -huh. We talked about the butler. Before the day of Pentecost had fully come, what was the last thing that had to happen? Matthias, an unknown soldier, mm -hmm. took his place. That's right. We don't even preach about Matthias, Good. but Good. there was a seat yeah. for him. That's right. He had been faithful. That's right. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time for the Matthiases to rise up. Mm -hmm. Listen, let me break and annihilate and shatter, debunk that whole philosophy that it's got to be the prophet Benny Hinn, the prophet Eric Butler, it's got to be this That's evangelist right. or this big name. Listen, That's everybody's right. got to come out of the woodwork. Yeah. Everybody's Good. got to storm the gates of hell. Yeah. Everybody's got to become a praying man or a praying woman. Yeah. This is the time that we need to invade heaven mm -hmm. with our prayers mm -hmm. so then we can have the power to invade hell. Yeah. You know, we talked about Daniel here. Daniel was a man of prayer. Exactly. He was a man of prayer. But wasn't it amazing that Daniel had the interpretation prophet of the dreams. Mm -hmm. He had the interpretation of the visions, but he didn't eat the king's dainties. Thank you. He wasn't at the king's table eating. 
He wasn't doing what the king did. He wasn't doing what the world's economy did. He didn't go down like Isaac down into Egypt. He went to Gerar. Come on, somebody. <laughs> where the blessing was. Right. How important is it for us to get back into that prayer time? I know you just shared it, yeah. but you know how important, get to that prayer time so we can get the power of God, interpret the visions and the dreams. What will that do? If we get back to that place, we start interpreting the dreams and the visions and things like that. What's going to happen uh, in these leaders mm -hmm. and in the world mm -hmm. when we get back to that place? Well, governments will be shaken. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought about one thing when you mentioned Daniel again that went along with prayer that, that I didn't in inject, and that's integrity came. So, wow. so the other eye with intimacy, yeah. integrity came. Wow. Daniel was yeah. not only yeah. a man right. that w was revelatory, but he was a man that was integral. He was a whole man. He, was, he had a commitment and a discipline. And what's going to happen? Because you have the intimacy, people know God. They're not guessing anymore because they're walking in integrity. The world can't find this or that on them. They have nothing. Remember, he was accused of a lot of things, but they had no, no smoke on them. They had nothing on them. Mm -mm. So he, we have to have that too, because yeah. that's been missing. We've seen a lot of stuff in these last several years that lacked integrity. That's right. And so when he, came, when he comes through this, when he gets the revelation to interpret things, he gets that release. Of course, what happens is the government was shaken. And what happened? We know. Now, let me just go back a little bit further. He had a, 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 an enduring power, too. Yeah, There's did. a lot of the people ready to faint, ready to give up today. Daniel endured four presidents. Wow. Because wow. he was whole. Yeah. Because of his wholeness and his connectedness with, with the Lord, he prepared him to be able to go through four different leaders. Mm -hmm. And he outlasted all of them. And he himself became a high man, but shook the government. Yeah. And then, if, and just like Joseph, in the end, Whatever word they say, the kings always say, listen to Daniel, listen to Joseph. Everything is in their hands. Why? Because I know they can handle it. And that's when they shook up the earth. That's what's going to happen. And that's the reason why they tried to bring in legislation against his God. That's right. Because the death, that's see, right. it's one thing. Go ahead. They don't need Go ahead. legislation when we cut in the fool. That's right. You know, what do you well, need it for? Why? We, we're, we're actually uh, right. unempowering ourselves. That's right. But when we begin to walk in the fullness yes. of the power of God, ladies and gentlemen, yes. they will have, that's the reason why, listen, we're talking about this because there's a whole lot of stuff coming up with voting, which you need to go out and vote and vote. vote for good, godly leaders that right. if, wherever you can find them or whoever <laughs> God wants to use. But regardless of who gets in office, we still need to be those Daniels in this day and in this that's hour right. Right. that have integrity and walk in the power of God right. and can speak the word of God right. in due season. Now listen, don't go away. I know you're getting stirred because there's much more to come <laughs> on Signs of the Times. Revelation for changing legislation. When we come back in about 30 seconds, Prophet Eric Butler reveals, now watch this, there's a new shift coming to the prophetic movement. Listen, if you're just tuning in, you better somehow rewind it and go back because you've missed a lot, but there's a whole lot more where it's coming from. And we are getting ready to talk about the prophetic shift that is getting ready to happen. You know, prophet, there's, there's the election that's coming up and all these things that are happening. Of course, we've already debunked the fact that we don't need to worry about, we need to worry about who gets in office, but regardless of who gets in office, it doesn't matter. It's not a success or victory either way because the kingdom of God is greater than the kingdom of the world. That's right. But we've talked about Daniel 
and about Esther. And we've mm -hmm. talked about some of these different prophetic voices. Mm -hmm. How do you see with this changing of the guard and everything that's happening, how do you see Good. the prophetic voice shifting in the body of Christ? Well, what's going to happen is, is the same thing I, I was mentioning before. One of the things that God's gonna bring back into the prophetic ministry, the prophetic office is integrity. And that has to be, mm. because I think that that's the piece that holds the prophets together. That's so good. Number two, <clears throat> what's going to happen is the price tag's gonna go up. Now, mm. what do I mean by that? Uh, most people do not know me and I don't, you know, I'm just a regular guy. I'm a pastor of a church and God uses me. That's the way I like to, to live my life. But he does use me. I've been in some wonderful places. But I'm not one of those people that are jockeying for position or trying to get somewhere or, or making connections to get to this platform or this or that. Mm -hmm. That's what had happened to the prophetic in the last 20 years. There was always this shift and this people trying to get to this platform, that platform. And you know as well as I know, yeah. most of it was about making money. Come on, Unfortunately, tell him, tell him. you know, you saw the yeah. hustlers yeah. come yeah. forth. You, hold, you saw the manipulators come forth. Even with the last election, you, you, you saw right, people right, come out right. of the woodwork yeah. saying different things, and it didn't happen. Mm. And so we lost a lot of pro what, what's called prophetic integrity. That's good. This is wow. very important. Yeah, this is. is very important. And it's, wow. it's not a, a thing of, of rejoicing. It's a sad thing because sometimes you could be so blind uh, like a Balaam, uh, that even when you're lying, you still think you're right because you've, wow. you're self-deceived. Mm -hmm. Or even when you're manipulating, you think your way is right. And just like you saw, <laughs> this is funny, but uh, when Balaam was going to try to curse God's people, yeah. uh, God sent an animal to, to block him. <laughs> it was a donkey. <laughs> oh, I got you. I got okay, you. Okay, yeah, you got, got you. <laughs> it was a donkey. That <laughs> Let me stop. But anyway. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's a political joke for those that are. <laughs> um, but but it's, it's things like that that people lose the integrity. So what's going to happen as far as a shift is going to be a greater level of prophetic integrity. I believe that words are going to be judged because the fivefold ministry is going to have to function like it's really called to function. Mm -hmm. Even the great apostle wow. Paul was not able wow. to just go and do his ministry until he first came back to Jerusalem mm -hmm. and got the right hand of fellowship from Peter, James, and John. He had to be uh, sanctioned. He had to be confirmed. And he went back to them with humility saying, could you guys bless me? Even though he know he knew Jesus was going to do this. These types of things are going to come back. The government of God is going to become stronger. The eyes of those that are in leadership are going to become uh, stronger. You're going to hear people, uh, I don't want to use the word judge because that word is interpreted wrong, but they're going to be able to see things clearer. Wow. And so what happens is, what's going to happen is the price tag is going to go up. And what do I mean by this? God's going to separate the men from the boys. Come on. Ministry is not a game or a joke. It no. is not a game or a joke. You know, we were coming up, if you had a nice suit on and yeah, a, clip on, a clip on, uh, 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 not a clip on tie, but a nice tie, your wife on this yeah. arm, a Bible on this arm, you took your picture. That was the ministry picture that you sold. 12 button suit. Yeah, 12 button suit, whatever it was, you know. <laughs> you had to look the part more yeah. than be the part. Yeah, yeah. But now you have to be the part. You got to be. And it was no joke. I mean, you start thinking about the prophets of old, you know, they weren't dressed like that. No. The prophets, when you go back over John the Baptist, who's the greatest prophet that ever lived, according to the words of Jesus, he's dressed in, covered with lo locusts and, and, and eating locusts and wild honey, clothed in camel skin. Camel. It wasn't about the outward men. Yeah. He had a holiness with him. He had a fear of the Lord with him. That's what's getting ready to come back. And every one of them, every one of them, when you look back, the price tag was, you, you may have to die for this. Wow. So the price tag goes up, which then will back a lot of people away. Mm. Because when there's no price tag to be in the prophetic or to be prophesying, especially on a governmental level, I'm not just talking yeah. about giving yeah. words and yeah. knowledge yeah. Uh, in a meeting, you know, right. God shows me this yeah. and, you know, brother. Car in a house. Yeah, car in a house. No, I'm not talking about that. You're talking about shaking the foundation of government wow. every wow. time your life was on the line wow. starting in Moses. Wow. They tried to kill him. Yeah. Moses the prophet, you go right down the list, okay? Wow. Right down the line. Elijah, Jezebel, Elisha, 
all the way down the line, Ezekiel, Daniel, they all were challenged with their life. Jeremiah, they're all challenged. Are you going to be willing to give up your life for this and stay true to God's word that he called you to speak? And the last great prophet is the prophet of prophets, Jesus, Jesus himself. himself. Amen. That's the price tag now. Well, you know, and think about it, because I can hear people right now, and I know some of you are already getting nervous because you thought you was going to have, let me tell you something, there's a shift in the body of Christ. Man, I'm looking for this platform. I'm going to prophesy and everybody's going to cheer my name and this, that, and the other. Listen, there are many a prophets, watch this, that Jesus, watch this, people cheered their name, but Jesus was booing in heaven. I think about the prophet Stephen, one of my favorite revelations in the book of Acts. The is. people are stoning him. Mm -hmm. And it's the only place where Jesus stands up. I know mm -hmm. they didn't expect me to stand. Stands up at the right hand of the Father. That's right. I mean, he stands, stands in the middle of his sermon yep. while he's being <laughs> stoned. Yep. I mean, think about that for a moment where a man like Stephen is preaching. They're stoning him, mm -hmm. but it brings Jesus to attention where he stands in heaven. This is the day and hour where the prophets are going to be so full of the power of God. Because some of you are probably thinking you're going to get inundated with fear right now. You're not going to have to worry about fear. Mm -hmm. Fear is going to be the least of your enemies. You're talking about operating in a level of power, prophet, mm -hmm. that it's going to shift mm -hmm. people. I think about Daniel in that time. Uh, I, if, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was Daniel or whoever it was that prophesied over Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Seven years, the man was yeah. out there eating off the grass and right. his nails were long. That's right. That type of power, we're going to be able right. to speak to those offices That's right. and God will back That's right. what it is that we say. So I don't want people to get this thing over like, oh, you're going to go out there and stand up for Jesus and just immediately just be killed. You're talking about walking in an authority, in an authority. that we have no idea about right, right now at this moment. That's right. And that, that's what has to happen. That's what has to happen because... It, once again, the kingdom of God supersedes all the other kingdoms wow. or so-called kingdoms in the earth. The culture of the kingdom of God is greater than any culture that man has ever put together. And it is true. When we talk about the return of the apostolic order, yeah. okay, yeah. We, can, yeah. we can put that in there, both of those offices, because the Bible says very clearly that the church is founded, what? Upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. That's right. Jesus himself is the chief cornerstone. OK, so if it's founded upon apostles and prophets, every one of them, when they stepped up to the plate, just look at historically yeah. of the apostles, every one of them were killed yeah. for the gospel. Yeah. The yeah. 12 I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. And we can go e even into others that came after the 12, but they all had to give it up. Mm. They gave up their lives for the gospel because that's the way uh, I'll use the word Christianity, but that's the way that, that was the, the life of a believer then. Mm. They knew that if you were a believer in Jesus, that, that, that what came with it was sacrifice. Yeah. Even yeah. death. Come on. We've in the arena. That. We've in, lost that. In the arena. We've lost all that. Yeah. They knew that they could be taken to the arena, you know, in the Torn days of ruin. Torn apart by lines. Made in the lampshades. They knew that. And they still kept singing. There's a great picture that I have in my office. It's a famous picture of the, the Christians being burned at the stake in Nero's court. And it's an old man and some Christians kneeling in front of him, but he's like he's looking up to God, a very old elderly gentleman. It's a classic picture that somebody painted years ago, but all around the arena you see lions coming up out of the, the uh, arena, coming against the Christians. Some of them are already burnt up. You see fire. That, I'm not trying to say that that's going to happen, right. but if it does happen, like, like the uh, three Hebrew boys said, yeah. if, even if you say, you're going to put us in the fire. Come on. We still aren't Stay going to going bow on. down. Come it on. doesn't matter, okay? And then when we reach that level where we're, we're, we're less afraid of, the, uh, or more, we're, we're more afraid of the fire of the Lord or the mm. fear of the Lord versus the fire of man, that's when the fire of God shows up mm. as the fourth man. Wow. That's wow. what happened. Wow. Because their fear of Nebuchadnezzar's flame that was hot was less to them than the fear of not completing the assignment and walking out what God had called them to do. And this is the reason why. And they were young. And they were young. And I believe God's going to do something in this younger generation. Oh, yes. Oh, this yes. Daniel generation. You know, we've heard about the Joshua generation. Mm -hmm. This Years is ago. the Daniel yeah. generation right now. And these are the people that like Daniel, that even if they legislate, 
It's illegal to prayer. I love it. Daniel yeah. doesn't go into his corner and say, well, let me just get together my little corner, light my little prayer candle. And he, right. he opens up he the, the doors. That's right. He said, let me show y'all the power of God in yeah. manifestation and begins to pray. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. He said three times a day. Yeah, three <laughs> times a day. Wasn't eating the king's food, though. No. See, some of y'all, listen, you can't have power eating at the king's table every day. What I mean by that, eating the world what you're watching on social media, the movies you watch, the entertainment you keep, no prayer, no, not in church one day a week. Mm. Come on now, we got to get more connected to God because there's too much power available. But this is what the Lord spoke to me. Because Daniel opened his mouth in prayer, yeah. it will shut the no. mouth of the lions. That's absolutely. And see, if That's we good. will begin, if we close our mouths in this season, right. It will open the mouth of the roaring lion. Mm -hmm. But see, when you open your mouth, ladies and gentlemen, the lion of the tribe of Judah, mm -hmm. come on somebody, mm -hmm. come on. is going to come alive yep. inside of us. And I believe this is a season The Daniels that will know their God, yep. be strong and do great yep. exploits. God's going to take the heat out of the flame yep. and take the teeth out of the lions. Absolutely. And that's just where it's going. Uh, it's not preached. And it's not preached many times because we've, we've come to a place of comfort. Now, we know that the pandemic has existed and, and that slowed us down also to a great degree because mm -hmm. people are not connecting physically with each other in the corporate sense. But yet the power of the church was always the assembling together. Yeah. That's why I love when some preachers, even in the Pittsburgh area, I remember talking to some of them during the beginnings of the pandemic. They said, no, we're going back to full service early. I mean, it yeah. was like yeah. April and May. Come on. Yeah. That's quick. Yeah. I mean, we came back in July that year because we had some deaths. But I was glad to hear that. And that gave Amen. me courage because Amen. some people didn't come back for years. And some people still, still are back. back. They still are back. <laughs> like what you're afraid of, you know. <laughs> the church is not the place where the boogeyman is. The yeah. church is the place where healing is Amen. and deliverance. You know, we, we go out into society in, in, in the different cities and, and we're there with people. We can go anywhere. But, we, but the sickness was amongst the people, but it's not here. And so we see these things that are very important that God wants to change during this hour. And I only got about a minute and a half left of this segment here, but I, I, wanna, I want you to speak to this. How important is it for agreement, unity, and no longer to be a lone ranger? Oh, that's critical. Another thing. <laughs> I know I'm not giving you a lot of time, but you know. No, it, it, it's super critical. The day of, of number one, the Lone Ranger is over because we grew up in an era where it was Lone Rangers all over the place. It was star preachers yeah. all, over, all over the place with big entourages. That's done. God has had enough of that. Had enough. He never was involved in a lot of that stuff, even though he could still use us in spite of ourselves. Of and there's been some great men and women of God. But, you know, people that serve in churches need to serve under leadership, need to be sent. All the apostles were sent. Jesus sent the 12. Jesus sent the 70, you know, and they sent others. There has to be a relationship between the believers and those that are in authority in the church. There has to be a relationship of serving and commitment. This is critical. Yeah because you're gonna need backing. Yeah. You're gonna need covering. You can't be out here by yourself. I feel like starting a church today. I'm gonna to go uh, yeah. rent a hotel right, right, room right, yeah. for $50 and get a, a crowd in there <laughs> and get some tracks and some music and say this is a church. This is what people have been doing. Yeah, in the last yeah. 20, 30 years, uh -huh. you can't do that. Uh -huh. The scriptures are still significantly saying you have to be sent from back in the days of Moses all the way through. There was Moses, there was Joshua, there was Joshua, there was Caleb, there was David, even there was Saul. Yeah. Saul was the one, if, if most people won't say this, but Saul was the one who sent David fi in, in finality to fight Goliath, mm. to fight mm. Goliath. Mm -hmm. Jesse mm -hmm. sent David to see what the battle was about, but it was Saul that says, okay, you don't want to use my armor, then go. Yeah. His, the king's words gave him that release to go do it. You have to be under authority during this, this time frame. Mm, my good God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick short break here. He's giving us a great package. We're going to wrap this up in a nice little bow and wrap it up when we get right back. Do you have living water? Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, will flow rivers of living water. Are you dry? Are you thirsty? Are you in need of prayer? Call our prayer line or connect with us online. 
so glad we're here. And as you just saw, you can call in at any time, 888-665-4483. And we're getting ready to wrap some things up. But before we do, we want you to call in. And uh, if you'll call in and just give us your name, your address, and everything else that they may ask for, we don't want nothing from you. We want to give you something. This is a season where we need to tap into God as our source. And we want to give you this mini book by Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons on God is my source. So if you'll call in and listen, while you call in, let them know that you've appreciated this show here and how it's been a blessing to you. And if you need prayer for power, you need prayer, our prayer partners are there to touch and agree with you in that place of agreement that we can see the power of God released into your life. Well, Prophet Eric Butler, it has been such a pleasure. And uh, listen, you know, give us some closing thoughts. Legislation, uh, the changing legislation that's going on. We've got the voting and all the things that are happening and the importance of the church uh, rising up. What has God kind of just encapsulated for us of what God's been saying through you today? I believe that the Lord is getting ready to break, this, number one, the stronghold of religion because that's a big one. Mm -hmm. That's the big one that most people overlook. I believe that the Lord is going to be deeply involved in the, especially in America. He wants to save America and give her a Amen. chance Amen. One, more one more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. And I believe that you're gonna see a, a lot of grace towards this country in these days that is coming, that God is going to raise up his church. He's gonna raise up his people in a special way. I believe these elections that will come up, uh, they'll, they'll be very similar to what you've seen. Uh, I, I make no predictions or anything like that, who's gonna win this or that, uh, like last time. <laughs> but I do believe it's gonna be uh, vibrant. The participation of the election is gonna be vibrant. I believe that during this time frame, you're gonna see people still in the natural reasons awaken to all their responsibilities. I believe the church is getting ready to play a bigger role in what's gonna take place. I, I, I just feel the church is gonna play a much bigger role yeah. in the next presidential election. And what I mean by that is, is moving people towards truth, moving people towards righteousness, moving people towards the, the order of God much more than even the last time. It's gonna be on a broader scale. Another thing is getting ready to take place. The church is gonna come into a level of unity like we've yeah, not seen. Amen. Amen. That has to happen amen. because all the bar barricades, walls and barriers are gonna to start to be broken down. But I believe that God is getting ready to do what he said he's gonna do. Mm. He, said, he said that the gates of hell would not prevail against the church, no matter what. Mm. And he's gonna bring his people forward in this, this day and this hour in an unbelievable way that's going to, it, it's, it's going to be astonishing what he's about Amen. to do. It's going to be exciting and it's astonishing. I just say that um, you that are watching uh, today, yeah. that yeah. you should begin to dig deeper in your prayer lives. Listen for the voice of the Lord. And I'm going to give you this word. For the Lord will say to you this day that I'm going to begin to speak into your ears and your hearts. I'm going to burn a word into your spirit where you'll be able to follow me. You will not have fear. You will not walk in confusion. You'll not walk in uh, doubt anymore. You'll not walk in negativity. I'm going to burn inside of your hearts my word. I'm going to brand it in your heart that you'll be strong from the inside out. You will not live a life from the outside in, but from the inside out and things will change and you'll see the connectedness of the nations in a in a unique way a unique way and when, let me explain that real quick you'll see the connectedness even of Israel and the body of Christ mm. in a special way mm. for the Lord says I'm going to continue keeping my hand on the nation of Israel and you'll turn you'll turn and look at the nation of Israel as a sign says the Lord in these days and the sign will be that there will be moves of God that will take place even in that nation and you'll see it happen in other nations and you're going to see me rise up and become the king, the God of all the earth. For that's who I really am. I'm the God of all the earth and there's no force that can withstand me. My love will be multiplied. My grace will be multiplied. My wisdom will be multiplied. And yes, there will be a harvest that will be reaped all over the world and you'll see it happen in these days that are coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My good God. Amen. Prophet Eric Butler. Man, thank you. Man. Like I said, if they don't know, they better ask somebody. Amen. God's Amen. hand is upon you and we so Praise appreciate God. you so much. Thank you for Amen. coming and sharing what God is speaking. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. <laughs> He's spoken a word of the Lord in season. Listen, the only thing that can change demonic legislation is for the, the church of the kingdom of God to tap into his revelation. God bless you and continue to go forward as we take the kingdom of God into the kingdom of darkness.
Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.